What's up guys? I'm Lucas Magyar from Vale Maya and you're watching Sofa King Cool magazine. All right, so we can cool there with Vail Maya. How you doing, man? Doing well, enjoying myself. How's the tour going so far? Great, loving it. It's gotta be hard, right? I mean, it is a hectic fucking schedule. Oh, I mean, we're, we, you, I sing for a living, so I, I guess I just wouldn't really like describe that as hard. Is it, is it a grind? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's hot out, the weather's not always easy on you. The schedule is, is usually, you know, not too relentless. There's breaks throughout the day, so I'm just, we're just enjoying ourselves. See, but you mentioned that this is a living. You know what I mean? What some people don't realize is that this is a job. Yes, it is. You know what I mean? I mean, you are you're a rock star. You got one of the best jobs in the fucking world. Yeah, I agree. But it's still a fucking job. It is, yeah. You guys put out an album last year. Yep. And you're still touring to fucking keep on going because yep. people, unfortunately, aren't buying the CDs that they sh once should have. Yeah, it's a whole different market now. I mean, just with the internet and everything that's happened. And I mean, if you if they want it for free, they're gonna get it for free, and there's pretty much no way to stop them. So it kind of makes our job a little bit more difficult. But at the same time, at the end of the day, I still sing for a living and tour the world. So yeah, I'm just sure. not complaining about it. You want our music for free? Take it. At least you're listening to it. Yeah, it's better than it not getting downloaded. Yeah, it could be worse, man. You know? it could definitely be worse. Fucking you digging ditches or something. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> or, I mean, I was working 40 hours in a concrete plant before, which was equally as hot. You know, I'm just like, I definitely, I'll take this any day. It, it, it brings you back then. You just mentioned that you, you did work 40 hours in a concrete plant. Yep. So you realize where you came yeah, from. And yep. You know what I mean? I've been there. I know the, the struggles of the 40 hour a week job and trying to write music on the side and do things. So it's. This is great, this is amazing. You can't ask for anything more. Now for being on the road as much as you guys are, is it hard to write? Or do you, are you guys able to take time off? Or do you, are you able to write on the road? I mean, yes. This can be harder than a regular tour because you don't really have yeah. that much privacy. The schedule on this tour is just busier than most. You know, normally we kind of show up at a venue and we're just sitting around, you know, until we play for like six hours. Uh, but here, you know, there's press time like now you got to be aware of and be there on time. Um, I do lessons with TEI, the Entertainment Institute, okay. so I got to be aware of TI the rapper, man? Yeah, That's awesome. What's that? TEI the rapper? I got no, no, um, TEI. -E I'm, I'm kidding. Oh, Okay. <laughs> no, I mean, well, I, dude, I've rep T.I. too. He's not bad. So if he, if he showed up, yeah, I'd, I'd probably listen to him. Big things happen. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Waka Flocka is coming out. So yeah, he, man. T.I. might be crazy. in his entourage. I don't know. You never know these days, you know? You sure don't. That keeps an interesting lineup. You know, like you said, Waka Flocka can be out there one day. I get Good Charlotte. Yeah. 741. 741. They're great. I like watching that band too. They're fun. They're wild. You know, what's crazy is that when you think. Some of these kids weren't even born when fucking some 40 yeah, kids absolutely. out there, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, some of these kids here literally have no idea still who they are, you know? And they're, they're rocking it, they got a big crowd every day now. Is that yeah, right? I've never heard of these guys. Some 41, what the fuck? I always, every time I see them walk past, I've never been like introduced to any of the guys. I imagine they're pretty cool, but I'll like, you know, be gazing out the window or something, and the guys, they're, they're always on like, these motorized scooters that I'll just like flying past. And because of that one music video they had, I can't remember, I always just want to go up to him and be like, The Sums! That's it, it just right? is so bad, but I feel like they'd all just look at me and be like, We've heard that a thousand times, it's not funny. So, I, I just stay in my bandwagon and I don't go out and annoy those guys. But I have watched them on this tour a couple times, it's always fun. That's cool. It's real cool. Now, uh, after this wraps up, and you guys can keep on going, more touring and things like that? We have a couple weeks off, and then we hit Europe. We're going to be going with a couple of the bands. Born of Osiris is one of them. Black Crown Initiative. I think I said that right. Uh, they're one of them. And I know Volumes is going out with us. So it's going to be a wild time. Tear apart Europe for a month or so and come back home. And then, then that's pretty much what we're ending the, the year on touring wise. Very cool. Very cool. It's been a rough year, man, for musicians in general. You know what I mean? I mean, if you think about it, I don't think there's been that many musicians that died a year. That this year. Really? I guess I don't know if I've really kept up on it. I really taken notice. David of Bowie, Lemmy, Prince. Okay, uh, yep. I Glenn guess. Fry. See, and those are the ones I haven't heard about. I knew about Dave Bowie, and that's unfortunate. And I heard about Prince, and that's also very unfortunate. Um, yeah, it seems like. Joe Perry just had a heart attack two days ago. It seems like 
once one one celebrity goes, it does kind of start this mini domino effect for the year. You know, like I can't. Well, who was it? It was like Michael Jackson had died, and then another big singer had died either before or right after him. And it was just like, why does it seem to happen that way? I don't know. You know what I think it is though. I think people give a shit more when somebody dies than fucking when they're there though. Well, but it's only because the you know if that's the case because that musician obviously had a monstrous following at one point for them to all care you know but you fall off no one's a musician forever you know you, no one's going to tour through their 60s and once you're done touring and putting out records you just have you know like the younger fan base doesn't know who you are you know these people are born never hearing your music and, and not necessarily knowing so unfortunately it's, it's not how that artist passes where everyone's just kind of like wow they really did a lot for me, you know, and I, I really do appreciate their music and it just took me till now to realize that maybe. Now, let me ask you this when we're talking about this. With this generation and the way that people have such short attention spans, you know what I mean? Like, years from now, what bands do you think are still going to be able to fucking tour? You know what I mean? I mean, like, do you think that some of these guys that are out there today are going to be the bands that are in their 60s, like Rolling Stones and Black Sabbath and all that shit. Those bands are so few and far between that I don't know if anyone can just call them out and be like, those guys. Because you gotta be legends to do that, you know? There's just so many bands that die out by the time that they're in their 30s even, you know? So trying to think of another 20, 30 years on top of that, you really gotta start something, you know? You gotta like, sure. you gotta be your own entity yeah. and that's it. I I definitely don't have the know-how to just look at a band and be like, they're going they're going through their 60s for sure. That's just a hard thing to call. And then you got bands like Kiss who just announced that once they're all dead, Kiss will be going for years and years because they say that they're uh, a business more than a band. Yeah, all the memorabilia, I mean, yeah, they're probably so, right. I mean, and you think about it, when you go and see a classic rock show these days, you're like, is anybody in the band fucking in that the, band anymore? Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? No, like, sure. They're fucking singing the songs and shit, and they're old as fuck, but is that yeah. one of the, you know, the drummer's there, right? That's and it, that's a real thing, you know, they're, and there they're are so many, like, relatively big uh, impersonating artists, you know, like Elvis impersonators. Some of these guys get real famous just because they're really good at pretending to be this guy. But unfortunately, some of these people are using that band's name because they own the name and fucking they're able to, you know what I mean? I hate to say it, Leonard Skinner, you know what I mean? They died. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I mean it's just like, like, it's right? a business. And they're like, fucking on tour yeah, still. So it's, it's a business. It's a job. I mean, it comes down to that. And if the labels want to keep this name going because they know they can still rack up money doing it, fucking bastards are going to do it, I guess. I mean, I would never do that, but... I mean, do, you, do you keep that in the back of your mind as being, you know, the veil may have, like, what's going to happen years from now? Of how are we going to keep on pushing? What are we going to do? Um, I don't know. I guess we're just focused on touring and writing at this point, so none of that stuff's really crossed our mind on how to keep the legacy going after it's all said and done. I mean, I don't really think anyone's thinking about that yet, and I don't I don't think it'd be time to think about that either. I, yeah, because you guys are still young and yeah, fucking, you know, we're you know, still trying exactly, to push you're still it. fucking out there rocking, you know, but you know what I mean? at the same time, we don't have a following like Kiss and Leonard Skinner and things like that, let's be honest, so we... Before we could even think about something like that, we'd have to prove to ourselves that we're even worthy of it. You know, if Bail Amaya broke up tomorrow, there wouldn't be a new band in place carrying Bail Amaya's name. It just wouldn't work out that way. Right, right. But I mean, you know, as a musician yourself, though, you got to keep in mind there's no 401k, there's no fucking backup, fucking IRAs, man. You got, you got to get that investment plan started early, and I'm on it, believe me. <laughs> I like it though, I truly do. I think uh, you know, every time you put a little bit of money away, a few hundred dollars here and there, it's just like you know you're investing in yourself, you're investing in your future, and that allows me to shamelessly spend money on my music endeavors, and I also get into film and, and film producing too, so being able to like try and push my limits there as well. I don't feel so bad when I spend a couple thousand on the cameras or studio time because I know that I'm saving for my future. So. Do, you, do you make films? Uh, yeah, I'm currently working on it. It's a new project of mine. I haven't like produced anything fully yet, but we are in the process of filming um, some shorts right now. We, me and my friends back home 
finished a, a full length script that I actually wrote like while on tour. It took me a good year to write it, but it's what's over a hundred pages. What's the genre? Uh, slapstick. Okay. We, we well, pretty much start with that because it's easy budgetary wise. Mm -hmm. Budgetary reasons, we're just like you know, I'll start with this. I like I love to write dramas and things like that, and very serious films, action films, action comedies are kind of like what I truly love to watch. I just love the action and the hysterical aspect of it, but I don't have the money to pour into that with exploding vehicles and such. So we just figured we'd start with some slapstick style uh, films and grow from there. Cool, and that, that's. An interesting take, you know what I mean? Usually when you hear somebody that's starting out, they don't have a big budget, it's, it's horror that they're shooting for because it's such a horror is the easy stuff. It's so hard because the effects that you need, the makeup you need, the lighting, you can't film in the dark without like the proper lighting or yeah. the proper camera. Neither one of those things is cheap and to make it look good after post-pro, it's like, I, I personally feel like horror is the last one that I would touch on because of the gore and everything of it. How are you going to... How are you going to pull that off without the special effects crew and the True. budget for that? For for comedy, it's just like make funny faces, tell great one-liners, have a good story that people are going to watch, and just make it funny. You know, and it's just like we got to spend a thousand dollars and do that. The the money really comes down to the gear to shoot. You know. Right, so it's just way easier. So the shorts are first, and then yeah, we, the full length. Because we uh, we don't have much experience with it. We're working with another guy who's got a lot of experience with the camera. But me and my other friend, uh, I just bought a camera, and I'm kind of getting used to like transitioning shots and stuff. So I didn't want to go and produce this hour long movie and then be like, man, I could have done all this stuff better. Better to produce a couple 20 minute films that are gonna be funny. You're gonna look at it and be like, could have done that better, but it's only 20 minutes. You're not gonna, yeah, at the end of the yeah. day, you didn't work off an entire month straight doing this, you know? So figure by the time we get a couple of those done, we'll have a better grasp on what we're doing. And with the other friend we're working with, I mean, he's got all the gear. He's got a nice stabilizer. I got a nice, every time I move the, the camera, you can tell it's in yeah, my hands, you know? Sure. You gotta throw the warp stabilizer on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Now, now, speaking of stabilizers and shit like that, what do you think about the kids that are out there filming you as a musician with their iPhones and the fucking Galaxy 7s? They make, the, the Galaxies and the iPhones, really, I think the Galaxies above the iPhones have a better picture quality, but, I mean, people put together some great film work off of those phones. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. But honestly, whenever I see, like, a camera like this one or, like, a photographer walks past me or something, I just, I'm like, man, it's a nice I'm just like obsessed with it now. Yeah, now once you get a little taste of it. Yeah, it's yeah, like, it's like the camera never goes yeah. unnoticed in my eyes now. Mm -hmm. You don't realize how much little bullshit costs yeah. this day. Yeah, oh, how much was that lens? Three grand? Okay. Yeah. It's absurd. Exactly. Like, that's that's the game. Yeah. Just the body of it's 2,000 alone. Now I gotta attach a lens. Fucking and you need like nine lenses. And fucking, it's absurd. You know what I mean? Oh, and then I need the editing software. Oh, and then I need a MacBook to upload the software onto. It gets expensive quick. That's why we started with plastic. Because we had to buy all of, you know, like the foundation of our gear first before yeah, we were producing yeah. the film. So it was sure. like, there's no way we can start with anything that's got like a ten thousand dollar budget even. No, I, I want to watch the film. I want to see the shorts. I Hell yeah, bro. I want everyone to see them. What am I going to do? Where am I going to go? Uh, at this point, like I said, we're just like we're kind of starting this thing from the ground up. So as far as like the marketing plan, not really in place. We'll, we'll have a YouTube channel and everything set up. Uh, we'll have our own website and everything set up. But as of now, it's all just just getting produced. So. Are you, are you commingling your businesses? Um, are you going to hear a well, Mia soundtrack on these films? See if we can work something out. I got to go through Sumerian to pull that crap off and That's then talk about royalties. I would much rather, and this is what's probably going to happen, uh, me and my homies are just going to write the scores and everything ourselves, and it's going to be free. We can produce it and cater it to the film itself, and if it ever comes up and I can take a clip, yeah, sure, I'll do it. I don't care, but I got to call up Exact on the phone and be like, hey, can I use the song that I helped write? Tell me what that's fucking like. It's just the business, Owning man. Some shit it's that you wrote, that you poured your heart into, and then you want to use it on some other shit that you're doing and being like, I gotta ask for I can permission to use my yeah. own. Shit. I mean, that's why, like, I have music projects back home. I have like four music projects back home on top of the the film stuff that I'm doing, so, and I keep all of that like to myself. There's no label there. There's Management is acceptable, but there's just no way I'm signing a contract for something I created myself right. and you're going to own it. It's just never going to happen. Now with Vale, that's a team effort, especially the band's been around for 10 years before I joined, so who am I to sit here and say who gets what? Yeah, I just yeah. do my job and 
let the executives do what they do and I accept it but as far as the stuff that I write and I create and I just it doesn't fly with me maybe Definitely. I'll pay for it later on down the line yeah it's just like I said it's gonna be hard man you know what I mean especially fucking something that you work so hard on to have someone tell you yeah. fucking eat shit the cool thing is like our label is is it's not like a monster label so they're easy to work with you know they do what they do because they have to look out for themselves and their bottom line as well it's just you know the way earth works uh, yeah. but if we wanted to do something it's not like with them it's not you know pulling nails on or anything like Definitely. that it's have a conversation tell them what your goal is what you're trying to do just keep them filled in on it and allow them to see progress and they're gonna back it and you know they, they know it's your music we just have the ownership over it because we need to because that's how the labels operate and it is what it is I mean Vale knew that when they signed a the contract so yeah yeah for sure it is crazy though it's a crazy world I'm just when I create a song from scratch, I just can't do it at, at my age. Yeah, I can't allow it's myself be, to. You, you know, it's, it's gotta I'll, be. That's your baby, man. Yeah. That's you fucking. I just, I don't, I'll take on the responsibility of the promotion and the marketing, and I'll find a team myself to do that instead of just giving it away. You know, like that's just, I would rather do the extra work and putting a team together, a reliable team that can get the job done, rather than just giving it away to a corporation that already exists. Well, you kind of think though too when you when you write something and you put it into the connection that that has with the fans out there. You know what I mean? I mean, think of how many kids came up to you and says, "You wrote that for me." Like that's fucking certain time in my life. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. Like those lyrics are what I'm going through right now. Yeah, I've been there myself. The same side of the fence. Like you hear something and you you almost believe for a moment that he was or she was thinking of you at the moment they wrote it because it's just so on point and that has happened to me as an artist too and it's like makes everything worth it that's the only way I can really put it when it, someone comes up to me and tells me that it's just like thank you because yeah. sometimes I wonder what I'm doing you know I'm away from my my family I'm away from the people who I love more than anything in the world and I'm gone a lot eight months out of the year and it's like is this is this really what I want to do? Then that one kid comes up and tells me that, and I'm just like, well, no, of course that's what I want to do. What my kid is the okay. best job in the world. Yeah, right, for sure. Definitely. Yeah, I love it. Now, people want to follow up, they want to know more about you, they want to know the tour, they sure. want to see something else. What are they going to do? Uh, you can check us out, uh, Vale of My Official on Instagram, or look us up on Facebook uh, or Twitter. Uh, Instagram, I personally, you can just look me up, Lucas Magyar, uh, on, on all the sites. Um, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whatever you want. I'm very accessible. I, I like to talk to the fans. Anyone who messages me, I always message them back. And we're pretty active on, on the band's socials as well, as I said. So, um, yeah, just hit us up on either my personal accounts or Vale of my accounts, and you'll definitely hear from us. All right, man. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you guys taking the time. Thank you. Thank you.